Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with me. My name is Cat and Candy Doll. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome all. Hi. This is a shifting video. Now, today, I'm going to talk about some things I have not talked about in my other videos before. Um, and some coping mechanisms I use. I know that I told you guys about one, but I'm going to tell you about something else too. I'm going to jump right into what happened um, when I went back to my hero and about my trip with Kago to his deserted island. You guys remember earlier on in my videos, by the way, you might hear some noises in the background. You might hear some insanely happy laughter if it's that time of day. I'm going to jump right into it. So when I went back, Keiko had been ranting and raving about how he wanted to take me to this place. And um, I actually left this part out of the video. He said he had a, like a remote island somewhere hidden away where nobody would hear me scream, where he could just wreck me and do all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I kind of brushed it off because this was like earlier on in our relationship before we decided to like really have any type of, uh, before I decided to get intimate with him or even try because a bit during that time, it was just me and Pushinori and I was just learning about how Keiko felt. So I completely forgot about all that. So he said he was going to take me to this place and I was really excited. I didn't, I didn't know where we were going, but I was excited just to be with him in that moment because I felt like we came so far with Frodo. Um, how was Frodo doing? Right now he's doing great. Uh, Endeavor is going with him to the, all the schools. He's checking out like all the places he thinks best for Frodo. And honestly, I'm just leaving it in his hands. He might decide to actually keep Frodo home. It might be smarter to do that. We just don't know because I don't know what the school's policies are. I really don't trust anyone with him. I know that's like overprotective of me to say, but I can't be there with him. I've been um, I've been a teacher for like kids his, his age, little babies, and you can't, I'm sorry, you can't be that negligent. I almost feel kind of bad for Frodo because he did make a new friend there. As I was carrying him out, he was reaching for that other kid. You know, the other naked kid standing in the middle of the floor. Yeah, the teacher noticed him and got him after I got my kid and, you know, just like blessed him for what he did or whatever. So anyway, me and Kegel are on our way to the island. And um, I was curious because we were driving. And I'm like, are we supposed to go there in a the boat? He says, we got to get to the dock. Then we're going to get out of the boat and we're going to board there. So like, we get off. So I was wearing this pretty yellow dress. And when I was younger, yellow was my favorite color. And as I got older, I started to like tail more. So I leaned toward the tail. So me and him were holding hands and um, I was really happy, guys. Okay, when I say happy, I mean like over the moon, happy to be with him, hugging on him, leaning on him, you know, just being a girl. <laughs> and you guys, I don't know if you know what that's like, but you can really be yourself around someone and feel comfortable around them. So we get on the boat and it's this little boat it's like a little motorboat, and so I step inside, and immediately when I step in, my feet get, like, wet, and I had on these sandals, like, strap sandals. This was just a really nice day, really breezy. It's not like here. I don't know why it was, it's so nice there, because right now the weather is kind of cold and just unbearable, and there last week it was actually a lot colder, so Frodo really didn't want to... <laughs> Proto really was being a cuddle bug then because you know he hates the cold. So I get on the boat with him and he's driving the motorboat out there to the to this place. It's massive. It's a big round piece of land with like trees. It almost feels like I'm on an episode of Survivor. And I'm a little bit scared. So I, you know, I kind of like squeeze his hand a little bit. He squeezes mine back. But then when he squeezes my hand back, I don't know why <sighs> I get the urge to squeeze his hand even harder, like squeeze it like with all my strength. And he, he doesn't really look at me. He just squeezes it even harder. And I tense up like this because I'm like, holy crap, that hurt. And then I want to prove a point. So I squeeze his head even harder. And then he squeezes mine even harder. And I don't squeeze it back. Cause I'm just like, you know, I don't want him to crush my bones because in that instant I felt, um, an overwhelming amount of like irritation. I don't know why. 
<laughs> maybe it's because of when I stepped in the boat, my feet got wet and I wasn't expecting that. And then I, my feet were cold. And just like, Ugh. So now I have this uncomfortable feeling. But at the same time, we are going to an island. I don't know why I expected the boat to be dry when I stepped in. Because it's a motorboat and usually those don't go under the water or anything like that. But it was weird because it's like half of it had water. It's one of those weird uh, things when you shift through like, it's almost like when you shift into a dream. That's why I hate shifting while, you know, just the whole sleeping and shifting thing. That's why I absolutely hate it. Because like, you don't have any control over what happens. And I know a lot of you out there script, you know, what you want to happen. But anyway, picture a white boat, okay, on nice clear water approaching land. They're not palm trees. I don't know what kind of trees they are, but they're coming up out of the water like bamboo. And then a nice big house. And um, it was white and it had blue, like um, blue shutters on the side of it and a white door and a big uh, porch. The porch kind of came out more. So that way it, um, it was further out from the actual door from the house. And then when you walked up the stairs, they were like brick. I don't know why there were brick stairs on top of sand, but who knows? But the whole island was basically sand. So I get there, you know, I have the sand like kind of touching uh, my sandals and everything. And that was fine. The irritation kind of went away. So we were heading up to the house and he said, I prepared something nice for you. And I said, what did you prepare? And he's like squeezing the door open a little bit. And he said, walk straight. And there's like rose petals all leading all the way to like the table. And it was a candlelit breakfast. <laughs> It was too early. It was too late to be like dinner. So he made like breakfast. And I was just wondering, like, how was he able to keep all the food, you know, hot or anything like that? And I know for a fact he had someone helping him. I don't know who it was. I'm pretty sure it's not Toshinori because he did. He was. um, He specifically did not come. It was it's his job to keep Frodo for these two days. I'm going to let him see what he says about that. And then another baby to see what like if his mind actually changes. Cause I don't know like what goes through his head. I really don't. And I was thinking about me 90% of the time of the fact that he said he wanted a baby. That kind of scares me a little bit because that means you haven't spent enough time with Frodo. I'm sorry. So after his two days, I'll see how he feels. I'll come back and check on him. Endo has him. And then he said he's going to give him to Toshinori. I keep calling him Endo. See, Frodo is rubbing off on me. Frodo cannot say Endeavor. So he calls him Endo. <laughs> it's hilarious. Anyway, so we get up to the house and, you know, I walk into the, you know, candlelit breakfast and I tell him it's absolutely beautiful. I hug him and then I give him a kiss and he hugs me and he kisses me back. And he's like, sit down, you know, we should start eating before it gets cold. So we're sitting there, we're having breakfast together and like my coffee is on the table. So I take a sip out of it. He takes a sip out of his. And it's so funny. We're like sipping in like sink, like drinking and eating. And I said, you know, this is nice just to sit here with you like this. Like, I wish this would never end. Like, we could just sit here. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to, you know, he doesn't have to, you know, pound me or anything to oblivion. We can just sit here. We can just enjoy a nice, relaxed night. So then um, <laughs> I, take, I take a sip of the drink. And I don't really recognize it. It tastes really familiar, though. And it almost tastes, um, you guys remember way, way early in my video in Truth or Dare, uh, me and Toshinori were having breakfast and he decided that, hey, let's play Truth or Dare right before it was time for me to go to the school because I think I was still holding back or lying to him back then. <laughs> this is before I started being my truthful self like I am now. But it tasted really familiar. I knew it had alcohol in it and I asked him what's in this. And he said, truth or there. And I said, no, we're not doing this right now. And he says, okay. And um, so I keep eating. And then I look up at him and he's just staring at me just like this. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, did you put something in here? And he said, I I'm not going to do that because I need you to be like conscious for this, all of it. And I go, okay. And so like, I don't know what happened when he said that. Something like stirred up in me and I kind of, um, I kind of felt the irritation and the anger come back. I felt happy, but then the anger came back. So 
he uh he put out his hand for me to grab his hand I grabbed his hand and he kind of he was doing this he was like kind of like rubbing my fingers and you know playing on my hand and then I like took his hand and I squeezed his hand again I tried to like squeeze it with all my strength because I just got angry and I was just like for no reason and I think the reason I got upset and not angry and so then like I got up and I walked over to him and, you know, I decided, you know, I'm going to try to, um, like, dominate him a little bit because I need him to feel like I'm in control because I just have this problem or something. I don't know. So I was, I was sitting on his lap and we were making out and then um, he put his hands around my waist. He was holding me on his lap. And then I was trying to desperately get up from his lap. So I'm trying to, like, squeeze his hand. And he's like, why are you like this? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, I think we should talk. So I sat on his lap. He's just saying, like, he was asking me, like, what are you feeling right now? And I just told him, like, I just feel, like, irritated right now. I'm really frustrated. Just really just, but I, I was happy. I don't understand. And he said, you know, it sounds like there's, you know, that has to do with, like, mental health. And um, it's kind of a sign of, it's a sign of depression in a way. But it's almost kind of like a manic depression because I got angry and just it was for no reason. And I knew that I had to do I knew I had some form of depression. I just didn't think it would be like a manic thing because at times you can be really, really happy. It's like a high high. And then if you get upset or angry, it's a low low. You like don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to like get dressed. You don't want to do anything. You feel like you just you can't <laughs> unless you have an obligation for work. And in that case, you're probably miserable because you have to go to work that day and you're depressed or whatever, or you end up calling in sick. It's hard to talk to people. It's hard to talk to friends, that sort of thing. Me and him sat and we had a long conversation. And it could have been a hot, steamy night it turned out to be a night of just pure therapy. He told me, you know, he understands and that he doesn't expect me to be perfect. He knows that I'm not perfect. He's just happy to be with me. I sat there on his lap and um, I was like running my hands through his hair and, you know, and he was kind of just, you know, consoling me, like rubbing my back and my shoulders. And <laughs> I know this turned really PG, but like, I know he, I could feel that he was like hard. I know he wanted to so badly, but he held back because of me, because I needed him to be like human and to be more um, loving and affectionate. I really needed that from him more than I needed him to like devour me. So not saying I wasn't turned on. I was at the same time, but I didn't want to jump from, I could, there's no way you can jump from that. You seriously cannot be in that kind of state and just jump from that to, and to something like sexual without, without for having first has that milestone of like confronting it and talking about it. Uh, we just basically that we just ended up cuddling, cuddling, and um, it was just nice being spending like quiet alone time with him. Just like we were the only ones in the world. <laughs> I have a few, I have a few coping mechanisms I use. I knew that I had um a a problem with like uh not so much panic, but like just you know whenever I get angry or frustrated, you have these stressors. I have two of these stressors I use. The first one is this. I wanted to show you guys this at the beginning of the video, but I decided to wait. You can make this at your house. This is my distressor. I don't know if you guys can see it. All it is is it's, you know, it's glitter, um, clear glue and water. And then I put some pink rose petals in there. I don't know if you guys can see. It's very therapeutic. In order to get this effect, you got to make sure you put in the right amount of glue. And I basically just use the Gatorade bottle. See? It's actually a small one. You can use a big one too if you want. But this, the reason I use this small one is so that I wouldn't have to use a lot of glue to get the effect I wanted. Because I probably used about this much glue. You see where my finger is? It's kind of a lot. But you have to add enough in order to have the type of effects you want to make this work. And I have plenty of glitter. Just when I get upset, I feel 
I'm feeling a little anxious. I hold this and I look at it and it actually, it, make, it helps you. It's a great de-stressor. And you want to know what's even better than this? If you get a sandwich bag and you put um, glue in it, like clear glue, and you add in some sparkles, it doesn't have to be these. It can be like blue or orange, whatever colors you want. And water, you can kind of squish it around. And you can like, oh, you can like turn the bag upside down. You can kind of watch it. That is even more uh, of a de-stressor than anything. That's actually more satisfying therapeutically. And, you know, just, you can even heat up, um, if you're feeling anxious or, you know, you can heat up like something warm, take like some rice, put it inside of a sock, kind of warm it up. You can put, add these warm, you can add these to your body in different areas and it'll soothe you and it'll calm you because you can feel your irritation building up. Sometimes it's really hard to make it go away. And it's also really hard to get out of a slump state. You might wanna get yourself a teddy bear like Lysiris. I have him and I hug him occasionally. <sighs> you just take a deep breath and you hug him. Kind of let your fingers go around. Say hi, Lysiris. Okay, you can go away now. But I have those as my de-stressors that I use. Um, they say it's important that, you know, watch out for your mental health. These are things to look for. Um, these are signs to look for to at least know you have an issue. I'm not saying you need to go see a doctor or go get medication because that's not always the answer for everyone. For me, it's definitely not something I'm going to do is start taking pills or anything like that. It's just going to make me more self-aware. What I'll try and do is change my attitude and, and make myself into a more positive person before I can really do that. I'm also working on becoming stronger. I'm working on becoming stronger every day. I am trying my hardest. Um, I hope this video helped you guys. After our cuddle, we didn't do, we really did not do anything. I'm being 100% serious. He was really there to comfort me and help me. And um, I really like that. I shifted back here. But before that, he said, you know, next time we come here, he said for sure. And I said, for sure. You know, it was a nice breakfast. We had pancakes, we had sausage, and we had eggs. And yes, the eggs did have cheese in them. So good. It's like the best. I don't know what it is. Well, the food is so delicious there. It's so good. If you go there for any reason, just go there for the food. I'm telling you, it's going to be life changing for you. I don't know what it is. It, everything, even the eggs. Like, I don't know how to explain it to you. It's better than here. It doesn't taste like the store bought ones. Um, I just, I was happy and then I went from happy to just here, just irritated and then irritation just stayed above anger. I didn't turn angry. I just, after that, I just felt the need to just grr, just attack. A lot of that has to do with your spirit guide to you, whoever your guide is. See, mine is a wolf. So the whole rrr, grr, vicious, you know, you know, lashing out, that sort of thing. It comes from that and it comes from, um, also like they're also territorial and all this stuff and when you learn about your spirit guide and your spirit animal you learn more about yourself and who you really are and you'll notice a lot of similarities between you and that and that creature between you and your guide you'll realize it because i realized things i didn't find out until after i found my spirit animal that I was already doing and i said okay it definitely matches my personality it matches my traits everything i am because essentially it is you. It's you, but it's not you, isn't it? Let me explain. That is technically you. You're that animal, okay? Just gonna say that. I'm gonna leave the video here. I want you guys to just think about, you know, if you've had moments like that. I know everyone gets angry. What's your distressor? You know, what do you use to help you cope or deal with your feelings? I showed you guys what I use. I even told you about an extra one, you know, with a bag. I might actually do that because I feel like that would be way more therapeutic. It's really hard to come from here, though, to, like, happiness again. It takes, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. There's ways you can make it happen faster. There's ways you can decelerate your anger. Of course, I'm not a therapist, but I learned a few things, you know, from dealing with children and all that. So, because I have a kid of my own, I'm really excited to see Frodo tomorrow. We're going to go see him.
Yay, I get to go see him. I just want to peek in on him and, and Toshinori and see how they're doing. Because I want to see how he treats my little nummy gums. I want to see if he gets irritated. I want to see if he gets frustrated. You know, I don't think uh, Frodo knows that it's Toshinori. So that other imposter who pretended to be Toshinori, he knows, he knew that wasn't him. So, you know, there's no chance of Toshinori being bitten by accident or anything like that. Because, you know, I know that was a question on a lot of people's heads, too. Like, you know, if Toga had transformed into him and Frodo bit him, was, is she just going to bite the real Toshinori when she sees him? No. My son is just too smart. Because he, he has such a huge IQ. I feel like he's just learning things too fast. In a way, I kind of don't want to put him into school because I don't want him to expose him to too much at his age. Because he'll, he'll learn. He'll pick up on it real quick. So I'm thinking uh, I might want to homeschool him. I don't know. I might have them just leave him home for maybe for another year at least. I don't know that I'm ready to bring him there. But we'll see what, you know, we'll see what Indo says. All right, guys. Um, If you like this video, don't forget to give this video a like. If you hated it, don't forget to um, ring the bell, the notification bell. That way you're notified when other videos like this one become available. Bing! And um, so I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. I know I was, I said I wanted to do a video sooner, but some stuff happened, so I ended up just doing the video today. And I'll just, you know, I guess release it later when I have time. Everyone, have a great day. Thanks for supporting me, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to comment, too. Don't forget to write in the comments what your distressor is. Don't forget to comment just on anything you want to know about shift, you know, about shifting. And I'll, I will literally answer them if I'm right there or if I have time or whenever I notice them. All right. See you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.